All right guys, Papa Pepper, once again, back in my natural environment, the garden, um, doing some more planting today. It's that time of year down here in the Ozarks, and today I wanted to show you one of the best resources I have ever found in my life when it comes to gardening. Sometimes I do start seedlings like this, but other times I will be direct sowing, and one of the best things I ever found, I actually found at Baker Creek a couple years ago. So while at Baker Creek, ran into one of the vendors, the man's name was Clyde, and he had developed this garden planner. This is Clyde's garden planner. Um, you can buy these from his website for $5 each, free shipping. So you order one, five bucks, free shipping, he'll get it right over to you. I definitely like them. We picked up a couple, and you can, you know, buy more than one, too, and share with your friends or neighbors or others. But this is so cool and so easy and so simple because what he's done is he's taken a lot of the common plants that you're gonna have in your garden. Things like onion sets, peas, spinach, cabbage, cauliflower, radish, turnips, beets, potatoes, broccoli, lettuce, carrots, chard, green beans, bush, um, sweet corn, cucumbers, squash, melons, peppers, tomatoes, okra, pumpkins, all that's on here. And all you do is you find your last frost date. Now there's a uh, I think it's called plantmaps.com. There's a site I use to find the average last frost date in my area. I'll link that in the description too. It works out really good. But here, the average last frost date is gonna be between March 1st and 10th. So if I take this red line here and I slide it over, it says the 1st and the 8th here. I'm gonna go with the 8th because if it's between the um, the 1st and the 10th actually, the 8th is kind of the same uh, safe side of that. So if I put my average last spring frost on that, then what happens is all these plants that I could plant, it'll tell me either when to start inside or when to direct sow in my garden. So the earliest ones would be like onion sets and peas and spinach and you know heading down from there. Uh, kale's a pretty early one too that's not on this list, but these are just some common ones. And then by finding my average last frost date, it'll tell me when I should direct sow outside or a good time to start them indoors. This is so helpful just for that alone. But on the other side, you have your fall planting one where it heads through with a bunch of them as well. And when you find your average last fall uh, frost, or your first, sorry, first fall frost, then it'll tell you how far before that to plant for your fall or winter crops. So it, it's multi-purpose. All you gotta do is line it up for your area. Very simple, right? hidden here on the inside too is simple things like spacing and kind of um, how far apart to plant them different things like that on the end of here in the blue it shows different companion plants so let's say I'm gonna plant my beets and I'm wondering if there's anything I can plant by my beets to kind of save my uh, spacing my, my kind of stack functions in my garden plant them with a good companion plant something that they'll work well together with I had over from beets and it says that onions, lettuce, cabbage, and bush beans are all good companion plants that you could plant near the beets. So all the way down, like here, sweet corn and okra would be some good ones to plant by the melons. And as you think about that too, your melons are gonna be sprawling across the ground. Your sweet corn or okra is gonna come up over the top of that. It gives you two different heights from the same general area to be growing your food. So, and these of course, you know, he's a gardener. Is he a trained professional and all these different things? I mean, this is just, general guidelines you know this isn't some stringent thing that if you do this you will have success but part of what i like about it too is he does have second corinthians 9 6 here and it's speaking spiritually but there's a, a physical application of it too but i say but this i say he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly but he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully so if you're actually trying to do all these things um trying to plant a bunch of different stuff this is a great way of doing it um, in green in the in the middle. It kind of shows you your expected harvest dates too, like, you know, heat and uh, temperature and moisture and a lot of things can affect that. But these are just some general ideas of, you know, when you would expect to be harvesting. You know, if you planted your radish and turnips, maybe on the uh, 11th of January, well, you could be harvesting them by mid-February already. You know, that's pretty good. So what I'm getting here is uh, lining up mine today, getting some stuff I started from uh, seed. So I've got little seedlings that I sowed indoors and then also starting to plant things out here. So again, this is Clyde's Garden Planner. I will link his website. Um, like I said, for five bucks, these things are pretty durable. I know we've got smartphones and computers and things right now, but this works when the power's out. This works when your phone is dead. This works if, if the grid gets shut down. You know, you can still, oh yeah, you know, it works, functions off grid, you know, does a great job. 
So just some things to think about. It's a great resource I found. If you guys have not encountered it yet, I would highly, highly recommend it. And like I said, just the fact it's got spring and fall, it's real easy, small enough, simple to hang on to. Um, gives you expected uh, harvest dates and companion plants and spacing and all sorts of good things to consider when you're gardening. So especially for beginners, but even those who don't really have it all dialed in in their mind, I would much rather have this available than have to remember it all. And the more I use this, the more I'll kind of get familiar with how things work on my land, in my property, and in my garden. All right, guys, hopefully that helps. Pop out. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and for his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all generations. Psalm 100. As always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Papa out.